And we're going to bring in. This is the start of the show. There's no. There's no flashy intro. That's how we're starting the show. There's no. There's this nothing. The Bart, boom, 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 boom. This is the Bart Winkler show. <laughs> well, I can't use the old stuff. Oh, you know, it's funny. Water. So this is Rami Makloff. Hi. Cattles and Rami on KSHA or where are you? Sacktown Sports. What are the call letters even? uh khtk but that was like the brand and oh. we've rebranded so we don't really use the call letters all that often or we're just sacktown sports 1140 that's cool and sacktown sports across all your social and digital platforms rami was with the uh here so what i'm doing today is this one is on youtube so okay let me just be 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 back it up i started a podcast right <laughs> Is that what we're doing? Yeah. I said, oh. I have no idea what I'm doing. I at like technically, I asked for help. I'm getting help. But now I'm also getting critiques. I don't want the critiques. I just want the help. Yeah, you knew what you were doing content wise. You, it was technically that you didn't know what you were doing. So people can keep their content critiques to themselves is what you're saying. But so now I put select ones on YouTube because I want it to be an audio. I want it to be on the audio platform. Um, but I do think there's a value to some of the video stuff. So Rami and I, this maybe you're watching this on YouTube and you're like, where are the other podcasts? Go to Apple and Spotify. And I've always waited to say this wherever you get your podcast. Whoa. And you can watch them there. I am on video in this one. So now I'm talking to like two different audiences, which is a, gro uh, gr a grave mistake. And my camera sucks because if I do the HD camera, I don't have a ring light. It's a whole thing. So this is the fourth episode. The background is good, though. I like your background better than my background. I've got some Packer stuff. Uh, I feel like I've got I some Packer stuff. stuff Hold on one sec. Yeah. And now for those of you driving in your car. Let me see what I can do. This is, uh, this is terrible. Rami is putting a Walter Payton uh, picture behind him, and he's holding it as if he's moving a couch. So this will be this will be is that, good. Is that good? There's the thought crossing my mind to just stop and start over, but we're gonna plow ahead. <laughs> we're gonna right. plow ahead. I'll drop the bit. All right, because because uh, I don't want to do any editing. So that was when I want to do all the things I liked about radio, but much easier. Right. Uh, Pre-taped. Do you do no the editing, editing, or is that like a, a Toby thing? Did I what? Do you do the any editing that needs to be done, or do you pass that off to Toby or Tim Shea or someone over there? No, I, I I do it so there does need to be no editing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I won't edit anything out. Fair. Especially this, <laughs> which I should. Uh, so we will get the Packers Bears. We got a loaded. We got an action-packed episode. <laughs> I'm going to talk to Rami Makhlouf here, and then I'm going to – this will be fun. I'm going to give quick thoughts on all the games in week two. Ooh. Yep. And then uh, we're going to talk some Brewers-Mets with Tim Shea. So we got an action-packed show here for you. a jam-packed show. Today. Now, we did have fun on our uh, post-game Monday morning show with the Packers, talking to a bunch of different people about the game. They beat on the Bears 27-10. to 10. I think – you had to expect that coming in. The the way that Fields and the offense looked, Rami, on that first touchdown drive, their first drive, it reminded me of when Matt Nagy first was with the Bears, and they had a scripted drive, and it went very well. And Mitch Trubisky scored on that drive. I forget if it was running or however, but it was like, oh, my God, maybe Trubisky's good, and maybe Nagy's good, and maybe they're going to bring that Chief stuff over. So I, I think there's more reason for optimism if you're a Bears fan, maybe seeing how, how that went. But then the Packers beat up on them uh, pretty quickly, which we had to expect. Lafleur after a loss, they win by like 14 points. Rodgers, you know, 23 and five. I think 24 and five now against Chicago. I think where I was a little skittish on this one because earlier in the week I said maybe Packers by six. I ended up going with the spread, so I'd say I won, but I don't bet um, on games. I play DraftKings. Oh, okay. You can go to DraftKings.com backslash R backslash Winkler Bart. We just play DFS. Yeah, well, the website I used to use to bet, I've told you this, 
they won't let me do it anymore because I begged them never let me again. By address, by phone number, I'll, I'll try to backdoor with the social. Please. Like, here's my <laughs> fingerprint. Never let me bet again. <laughs> I, I forget you telling me this before. You actually, you you told your dealer, you were like, never sell to me again. Like, well, there's one website that I used. Because the sign up for all these websites, the like the offshore ones, yeah. you got to send in your driver's license. I had to fax a bunch of stuff. You know, back when I was trying and then and then you get your money out and then you got to do crypto or whatever. But I finally set it up with this one. The other ones I won't use because it's just it's it's too much. So this was the only place that I would bet with again. Sure. And I had a bad evening. Because this is how they get you around me. They all have casinos. Um, what? Yeah. Wow. I had no idea. Yeah. I'm sorry. The, you're saying no, it's, quite, it's quite the it's quite the moment when your two month olds upstairs crying while you're playing blackjack hands against AI. So, <laughs> so I, long story short, I didn't. I would have. I would have won if I bet. Fair. Okay. Long story. Okay. Short. But you know, the Bears scored. I thought. I thought if the Bears had anything coming their way, it was momentum. And I thought it was, they had the belief after what happened against San Francisco. And look, the Packers played San Francisco a few short months ago in uh -huh. bad weather conditions, and they couldn't beat them. Uh -huh. But the Bears were able to do that. There was some confidence early. I think the talent gap is still there, especially the Packers defense finally playing like how I thought they would. I don't know. I don't know how many times you run that game back last night, and, and the Packers don't win. Oh no, the Packers win ninety nine times out of a hundred. They're they're the much better football team. And you talked about the fact that they're they're you. You could see why some people would believe early in that game. I never did. I'm broken. I'm defeated. I'm dead inside as a Bears fan. And I, I can't bring myself to believe, especially when they're playing Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. I will say this, though. And I don't know if this is just the new shine on, on a brand new head coach and, and this wears off eventually. That team seems to believe, like those guys on that team seem to believe that they can do things and they can win football games, including the one last night. And and they don't quit. They got fight. We saw them have the last gasp at the end on the touchdown that was not a touchdown by Justin Fields on that very stupid shotgun shotgun sneak. And may I mean the question is, does that have lasting power? Does that feeling, does that belief have any lasting power? for Matt Eberflus and the Bears. But other than that, same old Bears, Bart, same old Bears, in that they they do everything that they can to break quarterbacks. I I like the hire of Luke Getze, bring him over from Green Bay. You don't know what a guy is until you know he's never been an offensive coordinator, he's never called plays. But they didn't give Luke Getze or Justin Fields anything to work with in terms of their offensive line, in terms of the, the weapons and offensive playmakers – that they gave Getsy to work with or fields to throw to. They did nothing. And this is this is what the Bears have done throughout my life is set up quarterbacks to fail. You brought up the Mitch Trubisky thing, and I, I've said this in all my years working together with you and everyone else at the fan. I think Mitch Trubisky could have been better. Not great. He was never going to be Mahomes or Deshaun sure. Watson, the two guys that he was taken ahead of, but he could have been better. And Justin Fields' ceiling is even higher than that. I believe I just question if he'll ever hit that ceiling because he wears a Bears uniform. Right. I, I think the world of Justin Fields, I think I said he was QB one for me, which I'm usually wrong about. Um, Baker was my QB one. I think the year with our guy, mm -hmm. Josh Allen. So mm -hmm. that was a mistake, but um, I think Justin Fields is very good, but did he go to the worst situation possible? Yeah. Yeah. The Bears break quarterbacks, dude. It's what they do which is a shame because there is a lot of talent there. You saw it on a day where Kyler Murray ran all over the Raiders. You saw Justin Fields kind of have that same kind of vibe, uh, but there's still a lot he needs to, to learn. I mean, he can't be throwing the ball three yards after the line of scrimmage. And again, this guy had 70 yards passing, right? 70 yards passing. So you're going to need to do, if you're going to run, if you're going to have the threat of a run, you also have to have the threat of a pass. Right. I, I started a podcast just to, give you that analysis yes. that you've never the world needed before. that the yeah, world, the world needed yeah. that i'm in my basement uh calling in a favor to an old friend to tell you that 
NFL games are won and lost in the trenches. <laughs> in the trenches. Oh, I haven't heard you say in the trenches in a long time. That warms so up. here's the thing about that touchdown last night. I thought it was a touchdown. It was a touchdown. Yeah, and I think that, you know, I tweeted it out right away. That's a touchdown. And so Packer fans, no, it's not. Well, you're rooting for the Bears. All right, so if Rodgers did that on the same play, oh, it's definitely a touchdown. we would be screaming touchdown. You know why? Because it was a touchdown. I always – I always think it's funny when we look at uh, instant replay and we see different things. There's one picture you can see. Either the ball is there or it's not. Either the runner's on the base or he's not. Either they applied the tag or they didn't. Oh, no, to me and my – we're watching the same video, so I never understand that. Well, yes, it I, was, like, muffled and stuff. It was, But that was a touchdown, and Packers fans would have thought so otherwise. I think where the Bears screwed up is obviously the shotgun – if they run that play at the line of scrimmage and Fields just tries to lean in, they probably just call a touchdown. Just the but because they tried the shotgun. And all he has to do is fall forward. Yeah, and even if they didn't see it, they'd say, well, we called a touchdown because, of course, it's going to be a touchdown. Right. He's at the inch line. Right. And I thought there's no way the Packers are going to stop him here. It's fourth and inches. Even if you have a great defensive line, you don't need you don't need to go anywhere but then when you set yourself up back four yards, look, a lot of these first-year coaches are just trying to see what works, what doesn't, and that one didn't work. That was a bad play call. I'm not going to jump down Luke Getz's throat and call him a, a bad offensive coordinator and say they made the wrong hire. Like you said, first time calling plays, first time being an offensive coordinator. These guys got to learn, and sometimes mistakes and failure is is how you learn. So – Fine, I'm not. I'm not going to go crazy about about that play call. I'm. I'm more concerned with organizationally what the Bears are doing to Justin Fields and and the offense as a whole, and to Luke Getzey and not giving him anything to work with as a first time offensive coordinator. I also want to throw out there that I do have a phone number you can call into the show. Oh, it is four zero two nine one five Bart. Wow. Got your name in there and everything, huh? Yeah, and to wow. do that, we have an Omaha, Nebraska number. Why is it Omaha, Nebraska? Is that because I needed the Bart at the end? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> so, the only area code that had that combination of numbers—it's through Google Voice. I don't even—I don't even like. I used to work at a company that sold phone lines, and it was such a hassle trying to get anyone a new number. And now Google's like, here's a number for you. I don't get it. <laughs> but so <laughs> some, some of these podcasts I will be doing like live and I'll say, hey, call in at this time and, mm -hmm. and you can interact. But also that phone number is there to leave messages. And so, oh, so people can interact live with the show. Yeah. If I, if, well, if we were doing this one live. Right. I didn't mean it. That wasn't my intent. This, but. the podcast is, uh, not live oh no but i want the interaction because that was what was such a great part of the show of course so i want the interaction but you can leave voicemails uh i got one already from matt in the falls mm -hmm. matt he so i think i can play it and i think you'll hear it so let's take a call from matt I need to call in live. So you need to figure out a way to make like a live call in internet. Um, you know, we the people, for the people, by the people, with Art Winkler, internet radio, interactive yeah. game show. Game show. Um, All right. So I'm going to end that voicemail. Matt, thank you for leaving the voicemail. The first voicemail you get is somebody telling you how to do the show better. Yeah. We need to do it. Uh, we need to do it live. <laughs> but after the Packer game, we did kind of do a live thing with the stream yard and, and people were jumping in and that phone number is available. So if you want to leave a voicemail that we'll use in later shows, 402-915-BART, not BROT. I think Matt was confused with, uh, I think he said the BROT phone number. B-A-R-T spells BART. Uh, they just changed that in Webster recently. So you might not have gotten the update on your uh, iOS 16, but 
you can uh, call in and leave a voicemail, and maybe we'll uh, – I, obviously, I, I'll play anything. So, please do. <laughs> You'll still play anything? I understand when you had four hours to kill, play anything. You don't have to do four hours anymore. What are you doing, an hour a day? No, but I have – I don't know what I can play now. I just figured on the radio, I'll play whatever I want. I can't get in trouble. Do you think I could play, like, CCR right now and, like, sure. sing Scrub-A-Dub to it? I, I think I, No. Who's stopping you? I don't know. I That's don't the magic know. Of the Bart Winkler show. And now even more magic because no one to stop you. I had a very lowly red blog back in the 2005, 2006, 7, 8 era. When blogs were hot. Yeah. called And now, so called the Bucky Channel. And I had a knockoff version of Bucky Badger as my logo. And I got a cease and desist from the NCAA. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. So yeah, that's that why I don't have an intro. That's why. So I don't know if I can even play like audio. Can I play audio? Can I? I don't know. I, don't I, know I, I say just do what you want and wait for the cease and desist to come in. I think what I'm going to do on uh, Monday or no, on Wednesday, tomorrow is I'm going to the Brewers game. I might just stream the game live and see what happens. I might stream the game live and do a pod while that's going on. <laughs> see what happens. Again, just try it. And then you can have a weekly segment, what cease and assist did I get this week? And you just read the letters that you yeah. get from the NFL yeah. and the NCAA and the Brewers. Yeah, I'd say just go for it. They're not going to sue you on the first one. Just No, do I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, ah, you're good. I don't know. I've I've never been sued. You're fine. Um, I've never sued. I'm a part of a, all the class ass, uh, action lawsuits, though. I do get those emails, and I sign up for every one. <laughs> Last week, I got eight dollars back for some uh, beef recall that I, I never bought the beef. But you don't. Oh, I had to sign that. I never mind. Yeah, dude, you just committed perjury. Yeah, so now I'll get a cease and desist from uh, the bean company. Beans People or beef? I thought it was beef. You say beans? Sometimes when jokes don't land, I just kind of forget mm. okay. what I was saying. Fair. You know what that's like. I'm sure. I have no idea what that's like. Yeah. Hello. Um. Hello. What do you think? What, what's your take on the Packers here? Because I, I look at them and I was a little more worried than I was after Week One a year ago. They had the Bears on the schedule. Okay, the the Packers were going to win that game. Nothing being taken away from the Bears, of course. But they were going to win that game, Lambo Sunday night. All the for whatever reason, these two when they play in prime time, it's always Lambo, which is great for us. But now they got to go to Tampa. Tampa seems like a mess. Tom Brady seems miserable. Uh, there was a fumble exchange he had where it's like he wasn't even. He's just like I don't want to play. Like he looked like he got up to go make a drink while he was playing Madden. He like physically was not in body. It was weird. They're all. And he doesn't up. look well. He looks gaunt. You know yeah, this? I don't know what that means. But uh, what does it mean? You know what gaunt means? No. Like uh, like skinny and uh, sickly looking. I'll Google it to get you an exact definition of it. But uh, you look gaunt to me. No, I don't know any words that are like that. I know oversized and bloated. And have you seen Bart lately? Is he well? Remember when... Uh, Lean and haggard. Lean haggard, yeah. and haggard. Doesn't yeah. he look gaunt now that you know what it means? Looks very gaunt. Remember when you spotted me? We talk about this all the time, but you spotted me in the Deer District, and you're like, is yes. that Bart? No, he's a little too big to be Bart. <laughs> now there wouldn't even be the is that Bart. You would see me now from a balcony down below. You wouldn't even make the connection. What do you mean? I'm at maximum weight, more than I've ever weighed. Really? Yep. You look good. I mean, I only see you from the shoulders up, but you look good. I told you that before we even started. I think you look good. I was I was wondering. I, I went to my wife the other day. I says, I says, uh, Mabel, I says, did my shirt shrink? She goes, no. Why? Are you sure? Did any other clothes shrink? She said, no, because the shirt no longer goes over my belly. It like stops. Oh, no. Because now my belly is protruding. And so the shirt doesn't go all the way over. Do you have Untuck It as a sponsor yet? They're a sponsor on every podcast. Maybe you could get some free shirts from Untuck It. 
I've used Untuck It. They are a great brand. <laughs> Promo code. <laughs> Bart. <N. laughs> but, un- but I've gotten so protruding in the gut that the shirts now, Untuck It shirts would come up to my, to my chest. I think you need a bigger Untuck It. To my boobs. So you're basically just wearing like half shirts now, like a sports bra? All your t-shirts look like a sports bra? Yes. I. Uh, it's bad. It's very bad. And I, I often wonder, is this a cry for help? Is this for comedic reasons? And I'm, I think it's a little of both. Because, so, Rami, you were a former fat. Are you, are you ever worried about taking the, putting the weight back on? No, I, ref- I refuse to put the weight back on. I won't, I won't let it happen. I just won't let it. I've had knee surgery since I lost the weight, and I just did upper body work and <laughs> burned calories that way. I had hand surgery after I lost the weight, so I just did lower body work and cardio. And ca- I'm terrified of losing the weight back on, and that fear, that fear drives me. Or I hate working out, but I do it because I don't want to be fat again. I did an event. I mentioned this a little bit yesterday, but I did an event for um, the Special Olympics Wisconsin that was a trucker convoy. Oh, nice. And they went from Fond du Lac to Oshkosh, and I did the, the PA work, and I went to sign up, and because of my beard and my hair and my my body and the way that I walk, I thought I, I just thought that I would walk up and people would assume that I'm I'm a radio guy or whatever. They all thought I was a trucker. They're like, where's your rig? I'm like, my what? <laughs> you do have trucker vibes now that you... Yeah, I look like a trucker. Playing. You got trucker vibes. There's nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. Is that um, a trucker? You're wearing a trucker hat right now, aren't you? It's just a baseball hat, but okay. on me, it becomes right. one. Yeah. 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 So they're like, uh, where's your rig? And I'm like, my Santa Fe sport? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, so I, I don't know. Because and again, this is you know, but when you go to a truck stop, you can like I know who is just here as a person, and I know who's here as a trucker, right? And I, and I have a trucker look. I would if I was at a truck stop and I saw Bart Winkler, I'd think trucker. If I didn't yeah. know you and I saw you, I'd think trucker. And again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You just give off trucker vibes. Yeah. So I don't know what I got to do about that. I you keep yeah. trucking. I got to keep. I got to keep on trucking. That's actually how I signed off uh, at the event. I said, "Keep on trucking." Uh, so remember the. We remember what the breaking news was yesterday. Oh, it broke around noon that Mike Evans is suspended for the game against the Packers, and that of course broke yesterday. Yesterday, mm-hmm. Monday. Uh, so there'll be no Mike Evans. I don't know about Godwin. They're, they're banged up. I don't know what the Packers do against Tampa Bay. You would think that the Packers can – I just don't know how good they are yet. I don't know how good they are, and I don't know how good they're going to be. It seemed to me that Rodgers in game one was like not – not like Brady two days ago, but he was not like into it. And then against the Bears, he's always more into it. What I liked was that they finally gave the ball to Aaron Jones a ton. That's the Aaron Jones that's always been here, by the way. That Aaron Jones has been the Aaron Jones that three years ago I said, use him like Alvin Kamara. That's why. Yep. And now you've got A.J. Dillon to go along with that, and that's tremendous. The receivers, I thought, oh, because this is going to be such a, a point all year, I thought that Sammy Watkins had a role. He's the guy that might go out, run, post, 20 yards. That's all he does. Randall Cobb, eight yards, I need a first down. I go to Randall Cobb. Christian Watson, I guess you just flip the ball to him now. That's all you're doing with him. So it seems like – the receivers right now have a role, which, you know, it worked against Chicago, but they're going to need to flesh out all these guys. Because Christian Watson, how do you send the guy deep once and then don't target him again until the fourth quarter against um, the team they played in week one, which is the Vikings, I remember. Yes. Uh, I forgot. And then the Bears, all they did was like jet sweep the guy. Like, again, like he was Tyler Irvin. So I didn't quite understand it. So I think that needs to get fixed. And then the Packers run defense. David Montgomery, I think, is a tremendous back, but – 
as the Bears were giving up about eight yards of carry on the run, so were the Packers. Yeah, and the Packers' run defense seems like – and they did a lot to shore up the defense part, but the Packers' run defense seems like something we talked about year in and year out in my in my time in Milwaukee. But other – I mean, the other stuff you talked about, it's, it's Aaron Rodgers and Matt LaFleur's M.O. that when a guy uh, does something to uh, – break your trust or make you question your trust in him, then it takes him a minute to go back to him. And I agree 100% with what you said about Aaron Jones and throw A.J. Dillon in there. This Packers team is is very good, and I I, I still have to remind you of that or, 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 or encourage you and tell you that, Bart. It's still it's a Super Bowl-caliber football team. And I think as the year goes on, you'll see it evolve. Last week was a bad week for Aaron Rodgers, and people want to chalk it up to Christian Watson dropping that that bomb at the beginning. No, man, Aaron Rodgers was making bad throws and bad decisions throughout that game that made the Packers' offense sputter. And one thing you and I know about Aaron Rodgers, he loves playing with a chip on his shoulder. And he immediately heard the chatter and the chirping of, oh, can Aaron Rodgers and the Packers' offense get it done with these young wide receivers and unproven wide, he comes out and goes 19 of 21. And the he didn't put up a bunch of yards or a bunch of touchdowns, but he didn't really need to. That was kind of that was kind of just the 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 flow of the game and and the way that it went. I think as the season goes on, as Aaron Rodgers finds chemistry and timing and trust with whoever he finds that with in this wide receiver core, whoever emerges, you'll see the offense become more dynamic and more what you got used to seeing and they'll just get better as the season goes along this is a super bowl caliber football they win the super bowl i'm not saying they'll win the super bowl bart but they're they're in the discussion they are definitely in the discussion i think they only get better as the season goes on because that's what good teams do well what do you think about your bears then because you got houston you've got the giants you've got the vikings the commanders the patriots the the cowboys that could be a three and three stretch. There are some winnable games. I, I even, as you were going through that, I even heard maybe four and two. But they're they're the Bears, and maybe I'm getting a little carried away with what I saw week one against the 49ers. It's not a team that's trying to win right now. Honestly, that's why that's why last night's loss didn't sting all that much for me. I I kind of Sunday night. Yeah. I I know what this is. I, I know Sunday night. Sunday night. I, or Monday nights, excuse me, Sunday nights. Sunday yeah. nights. Yeah. Sunday, Sunday, two nights ago, Sunday. Um, I ain't getting up at 6 a.m. to record shows anymore is what I'm doing. I wouldn't either. We're doing this at <laughs> noon on Monday. I was I was just going to say earlier, have you been sleeping more? Maybe that's why I think you look better. Despite... No, because my kid gets up to watch Paw Patrol with us in bed. Very cute. Nice. What time does he get up? Like 6. Oh, jeez, no. I Maybe. don't sleep in anymore. I'm going to continue to not have children but uh i forgot what i forgot what i was just saying bart um completely lost my track of thought on what i was saying before we started talking about you and your sleep. well i wasn't listening so i can't uh but i actually was listening because i'm on video and i want to prove that i am and you're talking about how this is not a team that's trying to win oh yeah team. no the Thank Bears, you very much they yes they blew up the roster they're one of the youngest rosters in the league right now and i mean Hope, hopefully that's that's the only reason they haven't stockpiled weapons for Fields to be the best quarterback he can be, and that's the plan for this coming off season. Because this is a roster that's just not great. It's very young and very unproven, and just not very good. And no game is a game that I go into and go, "Oh yeah, they should win this one." There are games and four of the ones that you just listed off where I go, "They could win this one." Yeah, yeah. this is a winnable game, but. I don't have a lot of faith or confidence in this football team. Well, the real question that people want to know is, should I drop Darnell Mooney? I mean, I didn't start him this week. I had a, I had a feeling that he, he's killing me in fantasy, though. He's like my fourth-round pick. I, I mean, no, nah, don't drop him. Just bench him. I think I, he'll he'll produce as the season goes on. He's going to be Fields. I know you guys are throwing for 70 yards. Yeah, I, he's going to be Fields' number one target. It's just what does that mean in the Bears' offense? Hopefully it means more and more as the season goes on. I wouldn't drop him. I'd bench him. I mean, that all depends on your depth at the wide receiver position. What's that phone number for their fantasy questions? Oh, should I do a fantasy segment every week? Sure. 
It's uh, 402-915-BART. Look at you. Put the band. I know some people are only listening right now, but put the banner right across the bottom for, oh, wow. This is an example of a banner. Wow. <laughs> Click on a banner to show it on screen. I like it. I like it. Use yeah. banners to summarize your talking points and display calls. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yep. So I got Very the banner. 402-915-BART. Uh, uh, Rami Makloff, Cattles and Rami, Sacktown Sports. First week you went out there, dude, you had to like go knee deep into college basketball, breaking down the draft. I felt for you. Then the first soccer story, yeah. team got good and you had to That's, talk about them. Okay, the soccer thing, that was weird. The the draft thing, not my first rodeo, Bart. The Bucks, the Bucks were very relevant in the draft for most of my time in Milwaukee. So cramming and getting ready for a draft and learning about all these college players, it wasn't wasn't new to me. I've done that. What about the many, um many times? Football is it mainly this is a San Francisco 49ers town or yeah, just kind of like they're not a town. No, it's mostly 49ers. Some some Raiders still. We carry Raiders. Because it's different. Raiders. Wisconsin, we've got Green Bay, but Milwaukee and Madison and Lacrosse, and it's all Packers. Mm -hmm. In California, it's like, and then Oakland was there, but then they left. But it's it's frag it's fragmented. But nowadays, mostly 49ers fans, and and you don't get a lot of the Rams or Chargers fans up this way in Northern California. A few here and there, but. I would say it's probably like 60, 65% 49ers, 20, 25% Raiders, and then, you know, the rest. So with Trey Lance being out, it's Jimmy Garoppolo time. I would think that, I mean, and you'll find out as the show, uh, you do your show, but I would think that, like, Trey Lance is obviously the future there, but. I think give, Jimmy gives them a better chance to win right now. They're better right now with Jimmy Garoppolo. What they were banking on was by the end of this season, unlocking more and more of Trey Lance, that he would be better than Jimmy Garoppolo by the time it was it was playoff time. Because you look at the NFC, Bart, and the 49ers, they're going to the playoffs with Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo or Trey Lance. It's a really good roster and not a very great conference, barring, you know, a, a, an array of injuries all over the roster. This is a playoff team, and they're going there. They're banking on Trey Lance progressing and getting better as the season goes on and giving them a better shot at the Super Bowl than Jimmy G did. But if we're talking week three, who gives you a better chance to win a football game? Jimmy Garoppolo gives you a better chance to win a football game than Trey Lance does. Yeah, I think so, too. The incentives are pretty crazy. Now it's $250,000 a game. If he takes 25% of the snaps. So you got that this and, week. And, and another 100000 if he wins. He and another win. hundred, Yeah. So he you're earning about five and a half, six million more dollars this year if, if, if he pulls off a few victories here. They did restructure it, but now he's able to basically get all that money back. Yep. So yeah, uh, Sunday he makes $350,000. Do you know how long, how many podcasts I would have to do to make $350,000? is isn't that what Blue Wire gave you to come over and do the podcast? Humans will be extinct dinosaurs will re be back on earth and then re extinct themselves before I make $3,500. <laughs> I need a job. No doubt about it. I have an old resume. I just threw it up there on LinkedIn and monster. It's trash. It's absolute trash. Why didn't you update it? Cause it's every time I set aside time to update the resume, I'm like, this is the absolute worst, like last thing I want to do. But I need to, do, I need to do it. I mean, I need a job. I, you know? I touch mine up every time I leave a job. Yeah, but then I get worried about like, does the format like, do I need like, does it need to sparkle? Do I need like, you know, why don't you just send me yours and I'll like, cut so pesto. I can do that. I'll send you mine. Would you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it got you all the way to Sacramento. That, yeah. Look at you. I, I, I like my resume. It's a strong resume. Not just, you know, what's in it. What's in it is really strong, too. I've done some things, Bart. But uh, the, the format, the way it looks, it's not too long, not too short. You get all the info. It's good. It's my, good. Uh, my email's down right now. If you could just call and leave me a message at 402-915-BART. <laughs> you want me to just read it off to you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be uh, tremendous. Well, Rami, uh, I love you. It's great to see you. I love you back, buddy. You look I good. will call in this favor again. I mean it. You look good. I don't know if it's more sleep, 
the stress of not not having four hours to fill every day. You, you look good, buddy. Let's get to hear from you. Yeah, filling 36 minutes here was painful. <laughs> I'm tough to work with. Notoriously tough to work with. No, I'll get feedback on it. I mean, I do four-hour shows. Nobody cares what I say. And now that well, I would have, I would have done an intro here, and I would have, I would have taught as Rami. Okay, well then do it. I can you play drops? I don't know. You don't. Hmm. I don't know what I can do. I'm sure, you could put like a soundboard on your computer. It's just a question. This is all stuff we should talk about off the air. Where this podcast looks post dinosaur era, when I really figured it out, it's it's going to be amazing. Yeah, gotta I mean, learn. I'll have light on me. I'll have drops. I'll have the you know the Arnold Schwarzenegger soundbite website that everyone used to play thirty years ago when the internet first. I, was def- on I definitely use that. Yeah, definitely I'll have everything. That. Like I was saying about Trey Lance, what was he gonna? Lo- I mean, now he's got a broken leg, so we won't find out. Hopefully, you don't break your leg. But what's the Bar Winkler podcast gonna look like by the end of the season? Is what I want to know. Yeah. In approximately one hour. There you go. I did not. I couldn't really hear that. Yeah, I got to work on that too. See, it was an Arnold draft. Can't do it. Rami, I love you, buddy. All right, Bar, love you back, dude. See ya. See you, man.